Do you ever hear these crazy stories on TikTok like this? This pilot had to choose between saving his family or 150 passengers, and you won't believe what he did. And think, wow, that would be crazy. If it were true? Well, I'm sure a guy like this has done plenty of research before he's just gonna put out a video on the internet. So let's see how much he got right. TikTok roast, coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 74 Gear, is all about aviation. Now I get sent stories like this from time to time. Sometimes they're on TikTok, sometimes they're YouTube shorts. It seems like both platforms have a bunch of people who have done zero research putting out aviation content, and a lot of it seems to be intended to scare people. I usually click off because I think this guy has done zero research, but I figure we watch it together. Let's get into it. This pilot had to choose between saving his family or 150 passengers, and you won't believe what he did. Lewis was a 42-year-old man, and he was considered one of the best pilots in his city. So he made a lot of money and lived in a big house with his wife and kids. One evening, he was on a four-hour flight when he heard someone over the radio from an unknown source. At first, he thought it was just a glitch from bad weather, but after a few minutes, a voice came through crystal clear. The voice said that they were a group of criminals and they ordered him to crash the plane into the nearby airport. But just as Lewis was about to call the airport and tell him about the threat, the voice on the phone said that they had his family. Lewis froze when he heard his wife crying in the background. He had to choose between saving his family or the 150 passengers on board. Hit the plus for part two. He's zooming in on this guy like he's the pilot and no offense to this guy, but if I look like that when I'm 42, I'm going to be extremely disappointed in myself for my lack of sunscreen use. But this part of the very beginning of the video really confused me. And he was considered one of the best pilots in his city. I've been around thousands of pilots. You're never gonna have a pilot that is talking about a pilot and saying, who, Frank? Oh, Frank's the best dang pilot in all of Dallas. It's just not the way pilots talk. They're gonna be interacting with each other. If there's something that's really, really terrible, that might be something you might know, but you're never gonna hear pilots talking about another pilot as they're just the best in the city. It's just not the way it works. Next, we need to talk about this. When he heard someone over the radio from an unknown source. At first, he thought it was just a glitch from bad weather. If you ever listen to air traffic control, and I have a bunch of different videos where I'm talking about air traffic control and how pilots deal with them, you'll know that the pilots are continually switching frequencies. So if I were to come onto a frequency and someone were to say my name, I would assume it'd be another pilot that knew me or recognized my voice and said something like, hey Kels, or something like that. Does that happen very often? No, but has it happened? Absolutely. But you wouldn't think immediately something was weird or crazy or dangerous about it. You also wouldn't think it would be a glitch like he says here. At first, he thought it was just a glitch from bad weather. It's possible if you get too far out of range, the radio may not be working very well. I guess it's possible with a certain type of storm that it may impact your radio signal. But I've flown through, above, under, all kinds of terrible storms. And I've never had something where there was a glitch in the radio where you were unable to communicate or unable to quickly get it resolved. But this part is even more ridiculous. And they ordered him to crash the plane into the nearby airport. But just as Lewis was about to call the airport and tell him about the threat, the voice on the phone said that they had his family. When you're dealing with air traffic control, imagine this. Everyone's using walkie talkies. That's basically the same thing that you used as a kid. And you're able to transmit and everybody else has to listen. Only one person can transmit at one time. Which means if someone got onto the radio and said something that was very dangerous like, I have your family and I'm gonna do something bad to them, that means that everybody else that was on that frequency would be able to hear it, not just me in the plane. That also means air traffic control would be able to hear what this guy was saying. So what would they be doing? Of course, they'd be calling emergency services. The military would be notified, the police would be notified, and all the pilots that were on that frequency would hear what was going on. Is it possible for someone to get a radio frequency, track my flight, find out when I'm gonna be close to their area so that way they would be able to transmit to me on that frequency? Absolutely, that's possible, but it's not very likely and it would make this part very inaccurate. Just as Lewis was about to call the airport and tell him about the threat, the voice on the phone said that they had his family. First, we don't call airports. We talk with air traffic control. Air traffic control lets us know what we need to do. The other thing is, is that this guy, if he has this pilot's wife and his wife is crying in the background, that means that this bad guy is transmitting the whole time. So if this bad guy is transmitting the whole time, this pilot would be unable to communicate with air traffic control because there's only one frequency and only one person can talk on that frequency at one time. So it doesn't make any sense that this guy's talking 
with the bad guys talking with the pilot and the, thinking the pilot is going to make a call because they're all on the same frequency. So now we have our very young 42 year old pilot here and he has to decide between saving the life of his family or crashing a plane with everybody on board. There's only one problem. There's another pilot up there. That other pilot is not going to let you crash a plane. I've met a lot of people that I enjoy flying with. I've met some of their families and know some of their families, but I'm not going to let them crash the plane that I'm flying because of some guy who's on the ground with a radio. That's never going to happen. Let's see what happens in part two. Lewis started panicking. He had no idea what to do, but then he came up with a plan, a pretty good one. He told his co-pilot to call the airport using the satellite phone they used for emergencies. Meanwhile, he kept talking to the criminals on the phone, reassuring them that he was heading to the airport they wanted him to crash into. He told the co-pilot what to say using a pen and paper so the criminals wouldn't hear what he was saying. As they got closer to the airport, he actually lowered the plane so it looked like they were about to crash. But just as he approached, the airport cut all communications with the plane. Everyone in the radio tower at the airport started screaming and crying as if the plane had just crashed. Meanwhile, Lewis pulled up the plane and just continued his regular flight path. The criminals heard the people screaming at the airport and they just assumed that the plane had crashed. Little did they know, the airport was actually talking with police and they were working on tracking to find where the criminals were located. Okay, good news. He said something that does exist and that's this part right here. He told his co-pilot to call the airport using the satellite phone they used for emergencies. Some planes have satcoms and some don't. A satcom is basically a way that we can make a phone call outbound. There's a screen that we get into through the communication systems of the plane and it can make a satellite call to anywhere in the world. However, we're not going to be looking up to try to find the number of a local airport. We would be calling our airline directly in this emergency situation, of course. We'd be calling our airline directly. That There's a button you'd have to push, maybe two or three buttons you'd get there. You'd hit it and it would dial through as an emergency call and you would get somebody at your airline. That person, you could communicate exactly what was going on. So now you have someone on the ground who understands everything, your flight, where you're at, all that stuff, and they're going to be able to relay that information to all the relevant people. Trying to find the number of an airport that you're flying over or the number of the airport that you're flying to while you're flying is not very likely. There are charts that do have that information, but most of the time it's going to be hard to find. But this part makes no sense at all. He told the co-pilot what to say using a pen and paper so the criminals wouldn't hear what he was saying. Remember earlier how I talked about there's this frequency and only one person can talk at a time? Well, that still applies, even in this part too. If you have the bad guy who's transmitting all this stuff that's scaring this pilot and the pilot is listening because he can't be transmitting at the same time the other person is transmitting, then that means he'd be able to talk to his co-pilot, known as the first officer, and tell him what he wanted to be relayed to the airport, also known as the airline which he'd really be calling. So there's no need to be writing anything down because these people are still flying a plane while all this is going on, keep in mind. So the whole writing something down makes no sense at all, but also this next part makes no sense either. As they got closer to the airport, he actually lowered the plane so it looked like they were about to crash. How exactly does lowering the plane look like a crash? Unless the plane is inverted, or on fire, missing a wing, or something crazy, when I'm looking at it, I'm not thinking, oh, that plane's gonna crash. So descending, even if it was extremely rapid, I wouldn't be thinking, they're definitely gonna be crashing. And the other thing, with air traffic control cutting all the communication, that's not really how it works. If air traffic control doesn't call you, then you're not going to be needing to really call them, so there's no reason to be cutting communication, or how would that even happen? You guys are on a frequency together. The way it goes is they would say something like, Boeing 123, turn left, heading 120. And then I would say, left heading 120, Boeing 123. And that's how we communicate. So there's, unless they're calling me, there's no cutting of communication. They just wouldn't be calling me. That makes no sense. So far this is sounding like just a terrible Hollywood movie, including this part here. Everyone in the radio tower at the airport started screaming and crying as if the plane had just crashed. Unless the air traffic controller that was in the air traffic control tower or in the air traffic control building, because they are not the same thing, wanted to simulate or make people think that this was going on, they would have to key their mic, meaning hold the button for their mic, and then move around or get a group of people to come around them and transmit that screaming and crying. Because if you weren't pushing the button, nobody would hear you screaming and crying. So, makes no sense at all. But the most unrealistic part of this video so far is this part. Meanwhile, Lewis pulled up the plane and just continued his regular flight path. 
So in this story, this pilot's wife has been picked up by bad guys and they are talking about killing them. And instead of landing at that airport and safely getting everybody on the ground, the pilot decides to pull up and just continue his four hour flight. That makes no sense at all whatsoever. This is something that I pulled off the FAA website and it's a mental checklist for pilots to know if they're safe to go fly. And this one right here about emotionally upset would rule out your ability to continue a flight if you just found out that your family had been abducted and were possibly going to be killed by some bad guys. You'll see in airlines when pilots are around the world and it happens at my airline, I've seen it a few different times, that a pilot will be somewhere far away from his family. His wife may go into labor early or someone may have an unexpected death and what will happen is the airline, typically, not all airlines do this, I know my airline will do this, but if you're, let's say, in, in Japan and your family has an unexpected death and you would call in and you would end up probably talking to a chief pilot or somebody like that and what they would do is they would drop the rest of your schedule and immediately get you on a flight to get you home as quickly as possible. One, because it's just the right thing to do, but two, you are not going to be doing well as a pilot if you are emotionally a wreck there's somebody that you think is in harm's way, how are you going to be able to focus on flying? So this whole thing about that he was about to land at the airport and then he just decided to pull up and continue his flight so all 150 people can safely get to their destination and enjoy their holiday, it makes no sense at all. What's going to end up happening is the pilots in this hypothetical scenario would end up landing there at that airport and the pilot would get off the plane and go do whatever he needed to do not continuous flight. So you may have seen people telling this exact same story on TikTok or YouTube shorts, or maybe it's just me and people send these things to me, but it is from this book and I'm hoping for the writer's sake that this is just terrible storytelling by these people on TikTok or YouTube shorts because this is a terrible story. It makes no sense at all whatsoever. They're just trying to say something that sensationalizes and scares people who are into flying and forgetting to mention one key part of it. And that's this little part here about it being fiction. This story is lacking all reality, except the part about us being able to make calls from the plane. That part is pretty cool and it is real. If you enjoyed this video, check out one of these two over here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.